In this video, I'm going to show you some of the data insights that you can get into your classes that are set up and using MathSpace. So once the students have been answering questions in MathSpace, you'll start to get a lot of data that you as the teacher can then look over to help you inform your instruction as you're teaching throughout the school year. So looking at this demo year seven class, for example, I start on the insights page where I choose the class that I want to look at. And then in this filter, I can choose whether I want to look at the last seven days, 14 days or 30 days. These insights will change depending on which filter you use. So in the top left, I have this miniature calendar that I can look at. And these orange dots give me an idea of when a task might be due on a particular date. So I can see upcoming on the 19th of January, there's this check-in due for the real numbers. To get a more detailed calendar, you would come to the planner page, which I'll show you in a moment. But you do have the ability to click on a particular date, see the tasks that are due on before and after that date. And if I look at a date that is after the current date, so the 26th of January, so I'm filming this video in mid-Jan, so if I go to the 26th of Jan, I can even click Create Task button and create a task from here. In the Student Activity corner, this is just a measure of the number of questions that are being completed in MathSpace by students. So I can see there are eight students in my class. There are two students that have done a moderate level of activity, so 20 to 49 questions in this 30-day period two students with a low level of activity that only completed less than 20 questions. And then there are four students in the class where they haven't done anything in the last 30 days. So this just gives you a quick view of who's doing what, who's working more in math space compared to others in the class. Clicking these regions shows you the names of these students. And you get some highlights as well. So if students have had a learning moment or if any students doing independent work or going above and beyond target masteries in particular adaptive tasks, you get some of these highlights here too, which are great to see. Top questions to address are questions that students are getting wrong. And so if you've got students working on identical tasks, you'll see that there might be more than one student getting a particular question wrong. If there are three students or five students or 20 students all getting the same question wrong, you know that's something that then in class that you can work on with your students. Again, clicking these allows you to look at the name of the student. You can even click try this question to open the question up from the student perspective. So then you might choose to project this onto the whiteboard in class if you're working face to face, and then you can show the students how to answer the question correctly in that space. If at any point you want to hide this menu here, which has all of your other classes in math space, you can always click that arrow as well, just to get more of a view of the insights of this particular class. Having all these questions collated here, remember this is from the past 30 days. So if I choose a different filter, like seven days or 14 days, these top questions will change. Okay, any questions that perhaps students were struggling with earlier in the month will be removed if I'm only looking at the last seven days worth of insights. Clicking this button here, I can choose to present the questions to the students on the whiteboard and then I might work on the whiteboard and answer these questions. I can even click assign all questions. And so what this does is it very quickly creates a custom task, which is just automatically named practice questions for the students in my class to then work on. So if these are questions that a lot of students are having trouble with, will it make sense for me to go through it with the students in class? Then I can set a new custom task just based on those questions that the students have been struggling with in the past week or the past month. That way we can work on that continuous improvement of these students. Of course, you don't have to set it to the whole class. Certainly there might be some students in the class that didn't have any trouble with these questions. So I could always come to the students tab and then just choose those individual students who I know were having trouble with these questions in math space. Scrolling down a little further, I get these little tabs of who are the students in my class who are excelling and who are the students that need assistance. So to excel means that you're a student that have mastered at least three subtopics in the given time period. So in the last 30 days, I can see Claude here has mastered three subtopics. If I click that number three, that will show me the topics that Claude has mastered. So I can see Claude has been doing some work on equations at the year seven level from the Victorian curriculum and has achieved mastery in all three of those. If I click Claude's name, that's gonna open up a new tab that's going to show me more info on Claude. Okay, but I can show you that in another video. 
on looking at the insights of a particular student versus a whole class. Also in the insights page, we have the needs assistance. So who of my students have had some difficulty? And remember, we're looking at the last 30 days. So in the last 30 days, I can see Alma as a student that was having some trouble. And if I click that number one, it tells me the subtopic they were having trouble in. So I can see they haven't yet reached mastery. They're still developing this particular skill on calculating the gradient of a interval. So a line going between two points. And so I can see they are a student that's working in New South Wales. They're looking at the New South Wales curriculum. Scrolling down a little further, I also have top subtopics to address. So what are those common subtopics in math space? Because it's just been the one student, I can see three students have been working on this, the gradient of the interval. Okay, but it was just that one student, Alma, who we already know, it was having trouble at this particular adaptive task. They're still developing their mastery here. So those are examples of some of the quick insights that you can get into your students. I'll show you in later videos on how to do a deeper dive into some of this data where we can look at the student's level of activity and also their level of mastery and also individual tasks and how all the students in the class have performed in a specific task.